In this video, I will demonstrate a Venturi meta laboratory exercise where I will collect the data to study variation of piezometric head and total head along Venturi meter. Before we start, I would like to ask you if you find this video useful, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Let's start! Hello, today I will demonstrate a laboratory exercise which is flow through a Venturi meter. This is our setup. We have a hydraulic bench. On hydraulic bench the key elements are pump, switch on and off button, water supply inlet valve and measuring tape to measure volume. On top of hydraulic bench we have a Venturi meter itself. Venturi meter pipe, you can see here, consists of three sections. Convergence section, which is reduction in diameter along the pipe. The throat, which is the smallest diameter. And divergence section. Along the pipe, we have piezometric tubes connected. And we will be taking measurements for piezometric tubes from number one to number six. Diameters for piezometric tube for each location along the pipe where piezometric tubes are connected are shown at the front of Venturi meter. So these diameters you will need to calculate the cross-section area. These are our piezometric tubes. Behind the tubes we have measuring rulers and these measuring uh, rulers we will use to record piezometric head for each of this tube. At this stage, as you can see, the water level is the same in each of these tubes because we don't have any flow. At the end of the Venturi meter, we have our discharge valve. So as soon as we start operating the system, the water will be pumped from hydraulic bench into this pipeline, going through Venturi meter and then discharging through this discharge pipe. In part number one, we study variation of piezometric head along Venturi meter. We will set up flow rate to maximum and we will record piezometric head at each, at each tube. We start experiment. I push pump on button and I slowly open both valves together. So water supply valve and discharge well. I slowly open simultaneously them together. And I'm trying to achieve maximum flow rate. Means that my number one should be as high as possible and my number five, which is the throat, as low as possible. If it's not exactly at the top or at the bottom, it's still fine, but as long as it's close to zero and close to around 300, it will be fine. You can see the changes and piezometric head, because as soon as the flow coming through a pipeline, there is flow. You don't see anything because there are no any air bubbles, but there is flow going through here and coming through the discharge valve. I'm almost there. You can see it's going down. That one is going up. You see it's too low. I need to adjust. A little bit adjustment that my water levels are within the scale. I will just open a little bit more to have a bit a little bit higher flow rate. Maybe this, yeah, this goes a little bit down, and this would be okay. And for this experiment, as I said, this is part number one, and we study variation of piezometric head. So I will do recordings of piezometric head for each tube, 
from one to six. After that, we will measure flow rate. So my readings here is 219, 215, 135, 117, here it's zero, here we have around 145, and here is also, which is number seven, which I don't take this reading, but this is also around 145. After I have done all these reasons, you record them in your table number one, and then now we need to measure flow rate. To measure the flow rate, a close hydraulic bench tap, so my tap is here, you can see I close. This is how it's similar, like in a sink, you close the tap, as soon as it's closed, the water will start filling in in hydraulic bench, inside of hydraulic bench. And the water level here will start rising. This is our measuring tape. I will take measurements from the upper scale because this scale is too short, only from zero to six. And I will start recording when my water level reaches zero. Okay, so we are waiting for water level to go because we will be measuring from upper ruler starting from zero. As soon as my water level goes to zero, I will start my watch. My eye level should be on roughly the same level. So I started the watch and now I have to wait. Ideally, I have to wait for around 60 seconds which is 60 seconds to have an accurate reading. So I will record until my water level goes to 10 liters and then I will just stop. I hope it will be around 60 seconds. Yeah, it will be probably more than 60 seconds and it's exactly 10 liters. Probably I can stop now, which is, will be my stop. And I measured eight liters time it took to fill eight liters. I just stop at eight liters because this is sufficient time. So now my part number one is finished. To switch off equipment, I just close both wells together. Up to the maximum, there is no flow coming through the pipe and I switch off the button. We now completed a laboratory experiment and have the data to do calculations for a lab report. We will do these calculations in Excel, so let's start. I already prepared my Excel file where I have experimental data tables and also I have inputted experimental data I collected in the lab. Let's start with part number one. For part number one, I need to calculate velocity head and total head, and then see how all three heads, which is piezometric head, velocity head, and total head, change along the meter. First, I need to calculate flow rate. To calculate flow rate, I need to know the volume filled into the hydraulic bench divided by time, or end volume minus start volume divided by time. So I write the formula equal open bracket end volume minus start volume divided by time. And I click on time, A6. Now I need to convert flow rate into cubic meters per second. I have uh, previous value in liters per second. To convert into cubic meters per second, I just divide by 1000. Because we know that in one cubic meter, we have 1000 liters. Now let's calculate um, piezometric head in meters. So it's just conversion, millimeters divided by 1000 to get meters. And I just drag it down or control D to fill it down. And now we need to calculate the cross-section area of Venturi meter at the location of each piezometric tube. 
So the cross section area is equal pi, standard formula, pi, open bracket, close bracket, this is functioning cell, multiply by diameter in power 2. Our diameter is in millimeters, therefore I need to convert into meters, so I open bracket, click on diameter, divided by 1000, close bracket, and in power 2, and now divided by 4. I will drag this down later with all four columns together. So I need to calculate the flow rate, uh, velocity. For velocity, I calculate as flow rate divided by cross-section area, or I use continuity equation. So my velocity is equal flow rate in cubic meters per second divided by cross-section area in meter square equal and enter. Now I need to calculate velocity head. To calculate velocity head, my velocity in power 2 divided by 2 multiplied by g. So 2g is uh, required to be, uh, to be put into brackets. 2 multiplied by gravity, which is 9.81, close bracket. And now finally I need to calculate the total head, which is equal piezometric head plus velocity head equal piezometric head in meters plus velocity head also in meters. Now I have to drag it down. If I drag it down C or I can select and control D to drag it down. See what happens. With some of the values I have very strange results. And this is because when I calculated my velocity I took the flow rate from cell E6. However, if I drag it down for next value of velocity, the flow rate is taken from cell E7, and which is not correct. Therefore, when I calculate velocity, I need to fix my flow rate cell. So I click next to E6, where flow rate is calculated, and press F4 to fix it. You can see dollar signs are put automatically when you press F4 in front of E and after E, and then flow rate will be fixed. And then we, when you drag it down, all is uh, calculated correctly. Now we need to plot variation of piezometric velocity and total heads along Venturi meter. I don't have distances, so I will just use tube number. So you select tube number, then pressing and holding down control key, you select piezometric head, and then we will plot insert, and we choose a scatter, x, y scatter. I will make this plot a little bit bigger. I will deal with formatting later. I would like to plot now my uh, velocity head. To plot velocity head, I click on the line on the plot and I click select data and first of all I would like to add time uh, series name which I, I click edit and then I click piezometric, uh, I type piezometric head and I click enter. Now I have to add velocity head, velocity head, I click on X, which is also my uh, tube number, and now I click on my Y, which is my velocity head. And finally, what I need to do, I add one more line, which is my total head. X is the same tube number, and for my total head, this would be the values in the last column, which is my total head. All three heads are plotted, so what I will do, I will make this plot, first of all, I will choose, um, I will choose my elements, just to make it quicker. Instead of doing one by one, I will just choose quick layout. These are all my 
uh, labels and also my legend. I can put my legend under under the plot at the bottom of the plot. I need the names and also the plot title. So for name, I will just click here equal and I will read uh, piezometric tube number and here I will just type head because these are all heads and I need units. This would be in meters. And for the title, I will just use variation of heads along the meter, just to make it simple. And this is my plot. I still am not happy how this plot looks like, um, but to save time, I will uh, just copy format from previous plot. I have already done this plot, so what I will do, I will just copy this plot format and then paste format. What is important here that um, velocity head, velocity head and piezometric head they mirror each other. So if piezometric head is reduced, velocity head is increased. Music